Yeah. Certain stipulations, I got you. As far as uh, corporate businesses, is does that are you is that in your expertise as well? Can you move, relocate a corporate business if you want? Actually, to? no. I'm I'm not real heavy in the commercial industry, gotcha. but I do have resources that if that needs gotcha. to be done, we can get it done. Gotcha. Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's mm -hmm. up. Resources. Yes. Big time. <laughs> Good saying, because you know some people just say, "Yeah, I know how to do no. it." You don't know how to do that. No. It's, it's best to ask. Now, I can somebody. get your commercial property to start your business, but as far as no, really. relocating the whole entire venture. No, that that's footwork that mm -hmm. I'm not very savvy mm -hmm. in, but I have the team to get it done. So as far as with finding a commercial business like a location, yeah, I, I can definitely do okay. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So sure. how, so you kind of base it off of what they want, or you look at the right. So basically, with and so with the commercial um, real estate, it, it goes a little bit different from um, residential real estate. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look for the. Um, Potential renters or um, purchasers um, business plan. That's one. That's what the bank is going to look for. They're going to look for all of their profit and loss, their bank statements, and all of that. Um, and then when they're looking for a place to rent, the the person that's trying to rent is going to be looking at what's going to be a return on their investment from mm -hmm. them renting that place. Meaning, if they're getting a hair store, you know, what's their monthly budget to maintain the hair store? How much volume? They, all of those things have to take place. Because gotcha. at the end of the day, it has to be a bottom line profit for that person from renting or spot on. buying that commercial property. That's why a lot of businesses go out of business mm -hmm. because of that. And again, we go back to homework, footwork, and mm -hmm. the diligence. Right, yeah. big time. And those oh, are it's a perfect location. Yeah. You're not looking at the rent, you're like, God damn. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't very, nothing. very important. Yeah. And that's just like with me personally, with me starting my brokerage, a lot of people was like, well, when are you going to get, are you going to open up an office um, when you open up the brokerage? And my answer was no. Mm -hmm. um, the way that we're going into real estate right now is a brick and mortar building is not necessarily required. Um, of course, most, any business. Yeah, most top producer agents are not really walking into an office to right. be in there because the ones that are producing, they're out in the field, you know, getting deals done. And most of the things that we do are pretty much virtually. I mean, even now, I'm I'm taking clients out on tours on a virtual um yeah. scenario right now. So you got to, uh, I know a lot of these apartment companies, they have the cameras now. No, so there's actually an app that we have on our phone where right. once I schedule the appointment for my client, uh -huh. I will send them a virtual link and at the time of the appointment, they will log in and there's like they're physically there in the house with me viewing uh -huh. the home. I and it doesn't that. have to like you touch the spots in it. No, so I'm walking through. I'm walking in the home oh, so you, oh, and they're walking with me. See, and so I like, like so for instance, right. if I, t if I right, said I'm right. going to go and drive to Atlanta and check out a house for you because okay. you're in New York and you can't make it, I send you a whole video, but it's like, okay, well, what is that? that in the corner? Right. So you so missed that point. Exactly. So now, right, right. with that virtual tour, they are currently present with me, and they're like, okay, well, can you go back over there in that corner? And can it, you go back yeah, to the master yeah. bedroom? And it keeps it, it keeps that, you know, that, that personal, yeah, mm -hmm. that personal engagement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because well, you can have it where you just go through, but that's dope. Yeah, that's very, dope. it's very dope. That's dope. Whoever made it. that out was smart. I love it. I definitely <laughs> love it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Nah, it, it, yeah, I think it just... Now we have to kind of, I feel like 2020 was that restructure. Mm -hmm. So things that we used to do, we're probably not going to do anymore. Yeah. And the thing about it is the ones that are really going to um, thrive with the, since the pandemic has taken place and mm -hmm. still continuing to take place um, mm -hmm. in the world, if you're not comfortable of adjusting with change, you're not going to make it. You'll be blockbuster. Yeah. And, and, and also technology savvy. I've seen a yes. lot of my friends that were, like, they, they literally shied away from technology. Like, man, I don't have time for that. And now they're on my phone like, can you show me how to do this? And show me how Because <laughs> if you don't know, technology now is it's getting to the point to where, you know, they developed it, right? And even now, you know, it's integrated into so many things to where you have to have a base level, right? Mm -hmm. You know, understanding of can't be pecking. This is what this computer. is. Absolutely. Yeah, because you got to think, think about that. If things change now, you have to okay. I got to show this virtually. Mm -hmm. If you don't know how to work that app, absolutely. You don't know. You know what I'm saying? You may be able to download it's easy, yeah. but actually working the app and learn how to get through the kinks and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, technology is, it's is real big. It's definitely yeah. Key. Like prime example, I wouldn't have met neither one of y'all if it wasn't for this platform, this yeah. technology, yeah. social media. So I, it's no, I have no type of ties to anybody you know. Absolutely. So it's no way. I was like. I just so happened to look one day and your name popped up. I said, okay, I'm going to hit her. Yep. Then I saw yeah. him. I was like, I'm going to hit him up. So that's just, it's crazy. But people are like, nah, I don't want to do Instagram. You have a business and you don't have Instagram. You don't have Instagram. And then another thing, you have a business and you have Instagram and you're private. What are we doing? What are we, what are we, <laughs> do? what are we doing? You know, I'm about looking at my stuff. <laughs> you're right. Ain't nobody going to look at your stuff. Exactly. But, but you want to make six figures in yeah. six months. Right. And what they don't realize is, you know, it, it, 
I, it's not in a bad way, but people are nosy. Yeah. They want to see what you have going on, yeah. what, you, what are you doing, you know, and, and who you're working with. You know, they like to see movement. Absolutely. And, and, and the one thing um, that they always talk about in real estate is mm -hmm. pe people will, will, will work with who they know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. And they can't get to know you if they can't see you. See, correct. They can't get to trust you or like you if they can't see you. So. I'm pretty sure when I reached out to you, you looked at my profile. You, mm -hmm. you Absolutely. Like, Hold on, let me see. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, cool. Right. That's but if it, well, we were sitting in like a little shag or something, you're like, nah, I'm not doing that. Exactly. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. But it, it, it allows you, you know what I'm saying, to, you know, especially, you know, you doing business. And for the, the, the clients as well, you can actually screen people, so to, so to, so to speak, you yeah. know, not. In depth, but you can kind of say, okay, I ain't really dealing with this person. Mm -hmm. or I'm yeah. gonna deal with this person, but that that's where it, that's where it's taking us to. It's true, and you can meet so many people. Yeah. You know, because when you first came, on, I was like, you know, he was like, nah. And nah. then when you, and just the fact that you you came on, let you know, like, okay, you're on Instagram for reason. Because some people, right. nah, I'm not gonna do that. But what are you on here for? Right. What what are you what are you advertising? Your business, you know, uh, your craft. What and are you what advertising people, and for? And I think what people don't understand, and like I said, people are big. People are very trendy. People are big of on the course. height, and that's what most people will follow. Mm -hmm. um, I come from humble beginnings. Gotcha. So yes. I'm always open to recognizing and giving back to people that came from humble beginnings. Right. You know, I could be on a, a super mega podcast, and it can be great for my image. But right. at the end of the day, it's not only about me. It's about right. doing it for the culture. Right. And Correct. a lot of people will see a, a simple podcast and like, oh, I don't have time for that. But what we don't understand is a small opportunity can lead to a major opportunity. Definitely so. Because so. you don't know what can happen. Because mm -hmm. it might be somebody that I know wants to buy a house. Right. And it's like, oh, well, now I can just be like, here you go. As opposed to just, well, I can't. I don't know anybody, so just find somebody. Mm -hmm. and or not even just take me out of the equation. Mm -hmm. But somebody can see this whole entire uh, podcast platform mm -hmm. that neither you nor myself may even know. Correct. But next thing you know, we get a phone call and say, we want to take this on the road. Right. You, know, <laughs> you don't understand. And, that's what, and those are All, the resources that are always, always around. You have to always for opportunities. Proactive. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I definitely resonate with that. Can't catch passes with your hands closed. No. Nah. Uh -uh. Be open and broad. And, and, and that's what it's about. Like you say, things for the culture. And that's what we meant to do. You know, just going around, you know, cause, because you're coming here, you have a, a demographic and that watch what right. you have going on. Absolutely. I mean, cause look, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's just a lot of what people, it is. A lot of people comment on your episode. <laughs> right. They was yeah. like, man, I learned this and this and this and this. It's it still like, the top one. Top one. Day, right? top, one. Yeah, top, one. top one. I was looking at it this month because I had to load up some other audios. Even the audio, like if you look at the audio, it's like, wait a minute, what type of magic type should work in here? <laughs> yeah, you know right what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but definitely. I mean, it, it was a very, it, it was a very strong interview, and you know, it was, you know, it's definitely good for you to come back. Awesome. Yeah. You know, definitely. And as far as uh, since we here, uh, I see you in the fitness. Yes. So, like, what what kind of got you started into it? Well, see, um, I've been in fit. Well, I was an athlete in high school. I ran really? track. Oh, okay, yeah. that makes so sense. I've always been okay. fit. Um, good health has always been a thing for me. But I'm a mother of three. My Gosh. oldest is 16. My youngest is five. And with my last pregnancy with him, it was a very um, traumatic pregnancy. I was 190 pounds at delivery. Mm -hmm. um, I had gestational diabetes. I had bad knee problems. I, anything that you can name yeah. for a pregnant woman, right. I pretty much had it. Mm -hmm. um, delivered him, and I was still overweight. Um, I wouldn't say I had postpartum depression, but I just was not in a happy state. Mm -hmm. um, and I just had to really um, trigger my mindset that, I was Same there night. at the moment, but that wasn't my end all be all right. of giving birth. Mm -hmm. um, and I will be 100% honest and transparent with you guys. I definitely contemplated surgery numerous times. It and is I went what it down is. there and put down the money, came back, <laughs> got the deposit back. I did about five times. And right. my trainer right now, who I train with, who's all the way from Miami, yeah. and he came to Georgia yeah. um, to train me. Mm -hmm. um, I worked with him in Miami for about six months. And I told him, I was like, listen, if this little ugly thing that sits over my stomach is not gone, said, I'm going on the table. What they call you that? Know, the fupa. I was like, I am going to get I a full it. tummy tuck. I don't care what nobody says. And he right. was like, you don't need it. He's like, I'm telling you, you just have to tap into the beast inside of you. To make it happen. Yeah, man, she was. And I said one, one video. She was like three fifteen. <laughs> I said, "What the fuck?" <laughs> That's literally what I did. Um, he always pushes me past my comfort zone, and honestly, for me, like 
my career is a very rewarding career. Mm -hmm. The sky's the limit to the income that you can make. Um, I love what I do, but it carries a lot of pressure and stress mm -hmm. um, in our career. So that working out every Stressful single day labor. for me is definitely, when right, I tell you, it's right. therapy for Big me. Time. Like, it gives me, and I love to do it early in the morning because it sets the tone Fresh. for my day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. Because it, it, it's crazy how your mind and your body work as one in uh -huh. that situation because it's saying, your body's saying, this is too heavy, but then your mind's saying, we got it. Then all of a sudden, mind matter. yeah, then it becomes one, and then all of a sudden, oh, that's nothing. Right. 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 Yeah, and I love it. I love mm -hmm. it. And I'm always yeah. up for a challenge when mm -hmm. I go in with my trainer because he's always trying to be creative and try something new. But I definitely look forward. That's to all it. she did was complain to her parents. I can't go to the gym. I can't go to the gym. Like, <laughs> God, <damn. laughs> but I, I guarantee, since you had that, you know that that it was indoctrinated within you. You were still doing something at home. Oh no, I, I definitely yeah. I work with him between three to four days a week with my trainer. That's and that's right. when I'm doing weightlifting. But when right. I'm home, I have a home still, gym at home. Right. Mm -hmm. There's not a day that I go and I, I don't work out. Right. Yeah, right. as you say, diligent. Yeah. And see, you that's know. good to know because I think a lot of females need to hear this mm -hmm. because it's either you had surgery, you didn't, but right. I think the fact that you have three kids and you say, you know what, I need to work out and take this shit seriously. Yeah. And, and, and for me, I'm very transparent on my social media page. I actually have a fitness page where I post mm -hmm. most of my fitness mm -hmm. stuff and I posted my journey and everything. And I, I, I try to encourage every female that I come across because I get a lot of inboxes mm -hmm. where they want to get surgery. And I tell them, I, and the, most of them say body goals. And I always tell them, your body goals is not mine. Because yeah. we're two different individuals. We have different genetics and everything. I tell them all the time, go and find your best picture where mm -hmm. you looked your best and you felt your best. Put that on your screensaver. Put it on the mirror in your house. Mm -hmm. And let that be your body goals. Invest in that body goals scenario for three to six months. Mm -hmm. you probably And doing everything that you should be doing. And then when you do all of that, then tell me if you need to get surgery. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people, honestly, they've never been in great in that peak shape, so mm -hmm. they don't know. Right. They've never seen the growth in right. their body, so they don't necessarily know. And as far as um, being that women are reaching out to you, you ever thought about taking that business side of it? I've actually it? thought about it. I did it before when I was in Florida. I did um, online virtual coaching, gotcha. um, fitness coaching. Um, don't get me wrong. I love money. I love a good um, mm -hmm. affordable lifestyle, but I'm not big on just taking somebody's money just to know that gotcha, I can't do it. Gotcha. Um, I need that person to be very, very serious, serious about and intentional it. about what they're investing in. Right. So a lot of people when it comes to fitness and just discipline as a whole, people are not very serious about it. Mm -hmm. They want the shortcut. They want the instant gratification. So if I can't shift your mindset, there's yeah. really nothing that I can do I got with you. you. As far as um, attire, because you be fresh as fuck in the gym. So, so. pandemic. <laughs> pandemic really, really um, threw a monkey wrench in that because I was actually planning to roll out my um, fitness line last gotcha, year. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, but I couldn't get to California to get to the um, places where I need to go to do mm -hmm. the samples and everything. But it's still um, behind the scenes in the works. It's coming out. Um, slowly but surely. Because so. I think one, what's the one lady, what's the name, Thick Beauty Fitness just yes. released something and she took off like, yes, damn. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, so it, it's definitely coming and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a major perfectionist mm -hmm. so I just don't believe in putting my brand and my name on anything just to say it's out there. So it has to be right. right. Not everybody do it on social yeah. media. Yeah. I've like, seen this But when you create times. that way, that's that's how it's yeah. perceived by the yeah. people. Yeah, it has to be right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ain't no it, question. It has to be an opulent fitness experience. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and once they say, look, ain't no question, this is what it is, this is what you're going to Exactly. You know? gotcha. <laughs> and so what we kind of get into now is, you know, we since we have strong women, we having a, like a whole women segment now where we have a strong women, and we want to hear your perspective on like relationships as far as like bills. Is it 50 50 90 10 30 70 100 percent? How do you feel? Well, so with the, with the, I guess society that we live mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, I, I'm old school. Gotcha. I feel like this. I think um, if, if a man cannot provide 100%, you're not in a position to try to take on a relationship. Okay. Get yourself together and then explore that arena. But on the same token, if that person is really putting forth every effort and they've exhausted every resource and they're bringing what they need to to the table, mm -hmm. then you can do something with that. Gotcha. But when you're talking about a man that just sees a six-figure or seven-figure woman and you think that you're going to be the leech to latch yourself onto nah. that per person, nah. absolutely not. That's completely disgusting <laughs> mm -hmm. for you to even think that's even remotely. Because I feel like okay. even if, if she is making money, I still tell dude this. Still work to pay them bills. Right, exactly. That way she won't even... Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I, I'm, I'm a very fair person. If I see that you're making a constant, everyday effort, 
I'm a hustler by heart. Um, yeah. I'm always looking to elevate and grow. So whoever yes, is yes. laying next to me or in should my presence contagious. or observing my energy every single day, mm -hmm. you should be pretty much following suit and doing the same thing, <laughs> if not more. And if not, gotcha. then we have a problem. Very serious problem. Problem. Gotcha. Because gotcha. <laughs> we're definitely going to outgrow. Each